Welcome back to the topic Microbiological Analysis of Milk, Part 2. We discussed about milk quality standards and few quality tests were discussed in the previous session. As we know, various analysis of milk are performed to ensure the quality of milk. There are platform tests or milk reception tests which are performed immediately during raw milk collection or reception. The microbiological quality control tests are divided into two, direct or quantitative test and indirect or qualitative test. The direct test or the quantitative test assess the actual number of bacteria present in milk while the qualitative or indirect methods assess the microbiological quality of milk based on the metabolic activity of the microorganisms present in milk. <clears throat> we discussed various quality control tests for milk such as the lactometer test, organoleptic test, determination of temperature and pH, cloton boiling test, alcohol test, test for the acidity of milk, sediment test, 10 minute resazurin test, alizarin alcohol test and direct microscopic count. Now we will discuss about methylene blue reduction test, alkaline phosphatase test, 1 hour resazurin reduction test, standard plate count of milk, coliform count, enumeration of other types of bacteria in milk, enumeration of yeast and mound in milk etc. Now, methylene blue reduction test or MBRT. This test is based on the principle that methylene blue which is blue in its oxidized state is reduced to a colorless compound as a result of the metabolic activities by bacteria present in milk. Methylene blue is an oxidation reduction dye or an indicator. Methylene blue reduction test or MBRT is a rapid, sensitive, low cost and simple quantification method for the microbiological quality analysis of milk. This test involves the addition of methylene blue to milk sample and measuring the time required for the decolorization. The decolorization or the disappearance of color is due to the reduction of the dye which is due to the removal of oxygen from the milk and formation of reducing substances during bacterial metabolism in milk. The time taken for the reduction of methylene blue depends on the number and types of bacteria growing in milk. The greater the number of organisms and greater their activity, the more rapidly the dye will be reduced and decolorized, which indicates poor quality of milk. MBRT is used for judging the hygienic quality of milk and for grading milk supplies. It is used for assessing the probable quality of milk and also for detecting the post-pasteurization contamination in milk. For this test, 1 ml of methylene blue solution will be mixed with 10 ml of milk in a test tube and it will be kept in a water bath at 37 degrees Celsius. The tubes will be observed after every 30 minutes for their color until the complete reduction or decolorization of the dye occurs. Two control tubes will be set, one containing 10 ml of milk and 1 ml of the methylene blue solution after heating it in a boiling water for 3 minutes and another tube will contain 10 ml of milk plus 1 ml of tap water and these controls are set to compare the color changes in the experiment tubes. Coming to the grading of milk based on MBRT, a methylene blue reduction time of more than 5 hours indicates very good quality of milk. Color reduction in 3 to 4 hours indicate good quality milk. Reduction time between 1 to 3 hours indicate milk is of fair quality and reduction time less than half an hour indicates poor quality of milk. Next is the alkaline phosphatase test. This enzyme is present in milk and is destroyed during pasteurization. 
phosphatase test is performed to determine the efficacy of pasteurization. Phosphatase enzyme converts the substrate paranitrophenyl phosphate to paranitrophenol, which is yellow colored in alkaline solution. This reaction occurs at a pH of 9.5 at 37 degrees Celsius. For this test, 10 ml buffer solution containing the substrate will be taken in two test tubes and will be kept at 37 degrees Celsius. 2 ml milk will be added to one of the test tubes. The test milk will be added to one of the test tubes and to the other tube, 2 ml of boiled and cooled milk will be added. These are the test and control tubes. The tubes will be closed, mixed and incubated at 37 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, the color of the test is compared with the boiled milk control. The intensity of color should be same in both the test and boiled milk control. Any excess yellow color in the test when compared to the boiled milk control indicates improper or faulty pasteurization. Next is the 1 hour risasurin reduction test. As discussed previously, risasurin is an oxidation reduction indicator which undergoes reduction in two stages. First to a pink compound risorufin and then to a colorless compound dihydrorisorufin as a result of bacterial activity. The first stage of reduction is irreversible and the second is reversible. The reduction of risazurin in milk occur through a series of color changes from blue to lilac, mauve, purple, pink and finally colorless and these color changes can be compared with standard color disc in a comparator and expressed in terms of standard risazurin disc numbers. This is used as a criterion for the bacterial activity in milk. For this test, the milk sample containing risazurin solution will be incubated at 37 degrees Celsius and the color changes recorded at the end of one hour are used for grading milk. Rapid reduction of risazurin to the pink and colorless stages indicate high bacterial content and poor keeping quality. The risazurin test also helps to detect abnormal milk samples since leukocyte cells which are present in mastitis milk and late lactation milk also reduce risazurin. The risazurin disc number 4 or higher indicates good quality of milk, 1 to 3.5 indicates fair quality of milk and 0 to 0 0.5 indicates poor quality of milk. Standard plate count or SPC of milk. This is used to determine the total plate count or aerobic plate count or total viable count. For this, agar media containing nutrients such as tryptone, yeast extract and glucose of a pH of 7 will be used. Milk sample will be thoroughly agitated so that microorganisms are distributed as evenly as possible. Appropriate dilutions of the sample will be prepared. 10 raised to minus 3 dilution is sufficient for pasteurized milk while up to 10 raised to minus 7 dilution might be required for raw milk. The processing that is the preparation of dilutions and inoculation into media should not take more than 15 minutes. Pore plate technique is generally employed where 1 ml of the particular dilution of the milk sample will be mixed with 15 ml of medium at 45 degrees Celsius. After solidification, the plates will be inverted and incubated at 37 degrees Celsius for 48 hours. After the incubation, the colonies developed will be counted using a colony counter and the number of colony forming units per ml of milk will be calculated. The advantages of standard plate count are enumeration of viable microorganisms only, Cultural and morphological differentiation is possible based on the colony characteristics. This is suitable for the determination of quality of milk samples with low bacterial number such as for the analysis of pasteurized milk. The disadvantages are this method gives only a rough estimate of microbial counts. This is a time consuming, laborious and cumbersome procedure. It is not capable to grow all the species of bacteria present in the milk. Temperature of incubation 
may not be optimum for all types of bacteria and the amount of sample taken may not be representative of the total sample total milk sample the microbiological standards for grading of raw milk by standard plate count are given in the table a colony count exceeding 2 lakh not exceeding 2 lakh indicates very good quality of milk a count between 2 to 10 lakhs indicate good quality milk a count between 10 to 50 lakh means fair quality milk and a count over 50 lakh indicates very poor quality of milk next is the coliform count we know coliforms are aerobic or facultatively anaerobic gram negative non spore forming rods which are capable of fermenting lactose with the production of acid and gas they can grow in the presence of bile salts and they are present in the intestinal tract of warm blooded animals examples of coliforms are escherichia enterobacter citrobacter klebsiella etc the presence of these coliforms in milk indicates unsanitary conditions or practices during the production processing or storage of milk the following protocol is used for determining the presence of coliforms in milk presumptive test confirmatory test completed test test for fecal coliforms most probable number for the enumeration of coliforms which are present in low counts and differentiation of escherichia coli and enterobacter aerogenes presumptive test this is commonly used for the detection of coliforms in milk here a sample of milk will be inoculated into macongis broth or bile salt lactose peptone broth and incubated at 37 degrees celsius the production of acid and gas within 24 to 48 hours is regarded as a positive presumptive test it indicates the presence of coliforms in milk next is a confirmatory test the positive presumptive test tubes showing acid and gas production is tested for confirmatory test a loop full of inoculum from the positive presumptive tube is streaked on the surface of eosin methylene blue or endo agar plates which are then incubated at 37 degrees celsius for 24 to 48 hours coliforms will grow as pink colonies with or without dark center and a green metallic sheen in confirmatory test a loop full of inoculum from the presumptive tube is also transferred to a brilliant green lactose bile broth tube bglb tube that are incubated at 37 degrees celsius for 48 hours the formation of gas in the tubes also gives a confirmatory result for coliforms next is the completed test broth tubes showing gas production in confirmatory test or typical colonies from the plates from the confirmatory test will be transferred to macongis broth tubes and nutrient agar slants acid and gas production in macongis tube after 24 to 48 hours at 37 degrees celsius indicates a positive completed test gram stain preparation from the nutrient agar slants showing gram negative non spore forming coco bacillary rods also indicates the presence of coliforms next is a test for fecal coliforms or eichmann's test in this test inoculum from the positive presumptive tube are transferred to brilliant green lactose bile broth or macongi broth tubes which are then incubated at a higher temperature 44.5 degrees celsius for 24 hours gas production in the inoculated tubes indicate and confirm the presence of fecal coliforms the most probable number method a count of the number of tubes showing acid and gas production from the presumptive test give an idea about the probable number of bacteria present in milk this is obtained by referring to an mpn table the differentiation of escherichia coli and enterobacter aerogenes escherichia coli and enterobacter aerogenes are two types of coliforms which are present in milk 
This can be differentiated on the basis of biochemical test known as the IMVIC test which includes the indol test, methyl red test, vogus prosco test and citrate test. Coming to the enumeration of other types of bacteria in milk. These are generally done by performing standard plate count using different types of processing of samples or by using modified media or by using different incubation conditions such as temperature or duration will be different. Counting of proteolytic bacteria. Most proteolytic bacteria belong to the cyclotrophs which can grow at a temperature of 7 degrees Celsius. Different methods for the isolation and identification of proteolytic microorganisms in milk are they can be done on casein agar plates which on incubation for 6 days will give a number of colonies and the number of colonies can be counted after flooding the plate with a dilute acid. Or we can use milk agar plates which are prepared by adding 10% of sterile milk to nutrient agar. Clear zone around a colony indicate that the organism which formed that colony is proteolytic. The casein breakdown can also be observed as a white zone of precipitation in casein agar plates. Counting the lipolytic bacteria is the next. Lipolysis results in the development of free fatty acids that cause a bitter taste in milk. Cyclotrophs are generally responsible for lipolysis. Tributrin agar is used for the estimation of lipolytic bacteria. This can be done by plating and incubating either at 6.5 degrees Celsius for 10 days or at 37 degrees Celsius for 3 days. Colonies having a clear lytic zone may be considered as a lipolytic bacteria. Coming to the spore count, the spore forming bacteria can withstand pasteurization of milk. Spore forming bacteria which are present in raw milk are generally bacillus species like bacillus lichenifomus, bacillus cereus, bacillus subtilis, bacillus mecaterium, etc. For their isolation, the samples are kept in water bath maintained at 80 degrees Celsius, then cooled to room temperature slowly and during this slow cooling, the spores will germinate. The samples will be then plated and incubated at 37 degrees Celsius for 48 hours for the enumeration of mesophilic spore forming bacteria or at 55 degrees Celsius for 48 hours for the enumeration of thermophilic spore forming bacteria. Now thermophilic count. Generally bacillus and clostridium are thermophilic microorganisms. They are enumerated by standard plate count where the plates will be incubated at a higher temperature at 45 degrees Celsius or 55 degrees Celsius for 48 hours. For thermoduric count, the thermoduric such as Micrococcus, Microbacterium, Bacillus etc. are enumerated as follows. The milk samples are placed in a water bath at 63 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes and it will be then cooled down to 5 degrees Celsius. Then the milk samples will be used to perform standard plate count and the plates will be incubated at 37 degrees Celsius for 48 hours. Next is the cyclotrophic count. They are primarily aerobic gram-negative rods of the family Pseudomonadiaceae, Neisseriaceae, Flavobacterium, Alcaligens, etc. Here the standard plate count is done where the plates will be either incubated in a refrigerator at 7 to 10 degrees Celsius for 7 to 10 days or they will be kept in an incubator at 15 degrees Celsius for 3 days. Now the enumeration of yeast and mold present in milk. The most common yeast which are present in milk are Pleuromyces, Deboromyces, Candida, Prodotorula, Torulospora, etc. And the most common mold are Penicillium, Cladosporium, Fusarium, Aspergillus, Rhizopus, Muca, etc. The yeast and mold may be enumerated by plating milk sample in potato dextrose agar or malt extract agar and incubating the plates at 30 or 32 degrees Celsius for 3 to 5 days. 
and the count will be obtained from the plate. The microscopic method or the mold mycelia count. The mold mycelia count is made as a direct microscopic count. Next is the macroscopic method, the methylene blue borax test. Here, 5 ml of warm milk will be mixed with hot methylene blue and borax solution in a test tube. It will be shaken well and the agglutinated mold mass will be gathered by a scalpel into a circular disc. The diameter of the disc will be measured and its area in square millimeter will be calculated as a measure of the mold content present in milk. Next is the visual mold test also known as the modified methylene blue borax test. Here a small amount of milk is mixed with methylene blue and alkaline salts. It will be stirred and heated. The mixture will be then filtered and the mold mycelia will be retained and measured visually. So now we are concluding the microbiological and quality control analysis routinely performed to assess the quality of milk. Thank you so much for listening.